Hey, you got a laser? Got some tags you want to do, but don't know where to start? I'm going to show you my jig process that makes engraving these types of tags fun and easy. Stay tuned. Hey, thanks for stopping by. I don't know about you, but these little tags are a lot of fun to create but they're a pain to set up in the bed of the laser to make sure that everything's nice and square. Today I'm going to take a piece of half inch plywood, we're going to make a jig so I can turn these out in a matter of minutes, easy set up, ready to go. Let's get to it. Okay, to get started what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about uh, basic setup here. Uh, the things that you're going to want to make sure you can see is, of course, your cuts uh, tab and your move tab. If you don't have your move tab or you can't see that move tab, come over to Windows, right down to move and make sure that's selected. If that's not checked, go ahead and check it and it'll show up because this new feature in Lightburn called Save Positions we're going to use today. The other thing that I will tell you is we are going to start in absolute coordinates. We're not going to end up there, but that's we need to start in absolute coordinates. And uh, you'll understand why when we get a little bit further into the video. Okay, so to get started, I thought I'd go over what I've got on the screen here. Um, we're going to keep it real simple. These jigs that I make, you can make them pretty much any size. If you wanted to do four dog tags, you would make one something the size that we're going to do today. If you wanted to do 30 dog tags, you would just... Um, grow this jig. So I wanted to keep it small and simple today. The first thing that I will tell you is this outside black rectangle. That is the dimensions of the piece of wood that I have. It's just a half inch piece of Baltic birch plywood. The reason why I like uh, half inch plywood for my jigs is number one, they typically don't warp near as quick, uh, especially small ones like this. And I can use both sides for two different types of uh, tags. So I could do dog tags on the front side and round tags on the back side. And so it just uh, saves space in my shop. So that, uh, the material we're using today is half inch Baltic birch plywood. Um, the outside represents the piece of wood that we're gonna be working on. Then what I did is I just offset this rectangle that's the frame of the wood to the inside by a half an inch. And it's somewhat arbitrary. All I really want to do is generate two points, a point here and a point down here that I'm going to be able to refer to later uh, when we get to laser in this template out. Uh, and that will actually generate my two points that I'm going to line up in the laser to make sure everything's square. Um, this particular piece of wood is 6.75 inches wide by uh, 4.375 inches tall. Not a very big uh, jig. Again, I wanted to keep it simple. And <clears throat> you'll notice as I zoom in here, I've got this little spot right here labeled as top left. What you're going to see that we're going to do is we're actually going to drive the laser to right here and then we're going to hit the pulse button. And it's going to burn a hole in our jig right here. And this is where our user origin is going to is going to uh, originate from. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to be able to use the saved positions. This is a new feature in Lightburn. Uh, so we'll be using the saved positions feature, uh, which will really make this quick and easy to set up. Then I'm going to drive the laser to come down here to this point, and I'm going to burn another hole. And these two points, this point here, and this point here, I'm actually going to save uh, in save positions. So eventually when I'm all done and I lift this uh, uh, template out of the laser bed and I put it away, and then two weeks later I need some more tags, it's real easy to uh, uh, put this back in the bed, find these locations, line it up, put your tags in, and away you go. The other thing that we have as part of our setup is the outline of the dog tag itself. Now there's a lot of different ways you can do this. If you're buying dog tags from like JDS or someplace like that, they actually uh, have these outlines that you can download and uh, trace in uh, Lightburn. Uh, the other option would be is to take a picture of one of these um, tags on a uh, contrasty background and bring it in, trace it, 
and then measure it up, make sure it's close and uh, adjust it that way. Uh, these are pretty easy to recreate. You don't necessarily need this hole here. Um, if you get it, great. It's a great way to line it up, but it's not absolutely critical. So that gives us all of our components. Let's go ahead and uh, what we're going to do now is we've got to um, we've got to place this piece of plywood on the laser bed. And so in order for me to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to want to make sure that I'm connected to the laser and I'm in absolute coordinates. OK, and the reason why it's important that you're in absolute coordinates is initially we've got to kind of put the laser head in relation to where this piece of wood is. So what we're going to do, you notice right here, I've got this show last position and I've homed the machine. Now mine is up in the upper left hand corner because it's a thunder laser. If yours is another type of laser, more than likely it could be over here on the right hand side. It typically doesn't matter. Okay, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here to the locating uh, icon, turn it on, and I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to select this corner of this piece of wood. And it's going to, the laser head is going to drive over to that part of the bed. Now, once we have the pointer driven over to the corner of that uh, laser, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to get uh, this is our starting point where we're going to be. We've got to go ahead and uh, lower the Z and set the focus on this piece of half inch and this will get us at least a starting point. This process right now is not real critical. Uh, once we kind of locate the board and make sure the board's fairly square, um, the rest of it will fall into place. Okay, now all I'm going to do next is just frame the outside of the board just to make sure I'm as square as I can be. Um, and so I basically just turned everything off. Um, I've turned on cut selected graphics. That way I can just pick what it's honing in on. Um, there's a lot of ways to do this. This is the way I prefer to do it. It's, uh, and then I'm going to say frame. Okay, now that I got my uh, frame all squared up, I uh, just put a, a little jig together here, just so if I pick this up and put it back, I know right where it goes. It's just to ensure that um, as I'm putting this jig together, my placement doesn't move. Um, the other thing that I'll tell you is the reason why I don't use a user origin on the corner of this uh, piece of wood is it's too subjective. It's really hard, even though that the laser dot's pretty fine on this, it's really hard to tell kind of when you got it exactly where you need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn a hole here and I'm going to burn a hole here and those are going to be my two uh, points that I'm going to use to line this jig up. And you're going to see once we get this jig made, it's pretty quick to get it lined up and get going. Okay, now that I've got my jig all lined up and it's square, we've framed this, we know that uh, this piece of wood is sitting in the laser bed <clears throat> in relation to what we're looking at here. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my locator bubble here and I'm going to drive the laser head to this spot right here. So the laser head has gone there. I'm going to go ahead and hit the pulse button okay now that I've got the laser head driven over to this uh, position here I'm gonna save that position so I can go back to it later and this is going to be one of our user origins that we'll be able to use uh, when we want to set this jig up later later so I'm gonna go over to the manage tool and I'm gonna say add new and we're gonna come up here to name and say this is top left and hit OK. Now, this position right here has been recorded. I can recall it at any time. Now I'm going to go ahead and drive the laser over to the next point.
hit the pulse. Okay, now that I've got the laser head driven to the to the bottom right hand corner uh, and I've uh, pulsed it, I'm going to lock this position in. So again, I'm going to go up to Manage, Add New, and this is going to be bottom right. Okay, and now both of these positions are saved. Matter of fact, if you wanted to double check, you could go ahead and take and select top left. Your laser head should come from here and go back to this hole that you just burned in your wood. And if you wanted to return, come back to bottom right. Now your laser head is going to go from here back down across here. And these holes, the nice thing about this little bitty hole that you just perforated in this half inch piece of plywood is it's really easy to line up because it almost disappears. That red dot almost disappears uh, away from your the top of your surface of your jig. Okay, I think we're ready to go ahead and uh, burn out these templates for these dog tags and uh, label this top left, bottom right. I've turned off uh, the text that I don't need and the frames that I don't need. The only thing that we're going to engrave is uh, the material out of the dog tag area and then just some labels and some little circles to indicate where the hole should be. Uh, it's always a good idea to go ahead and preview this just to make sure what you see is what you get. And it looks like everything's great. We've got a fill on the blue, which is a dog tags, and an engrave on the um, purple color. So we'll go ahead and get these uh, going. Okay. One other thing I added before I picked this up off the laser bed is I added the X and Y coordinates on these two positions. That way, if for some reason I lose light burn or something happens and I lose these positions, I can always go in here and key them in if I have to and say go to and then save them again. So it's always good to put your X and Y coordinates on your jigs and that way um, something happens to your software or you inadvertently delete one of these, uh, you don't have to worry about it. So now that I've got my jig made, it's all sanded, looks good. I'm, uh, I don't need this uh, outside rectangle anymore. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. So we're going to go ahead and just select it and hit delete. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and save my file. I've got my two uh, coordinate systems here. And now what I'll do is I will home the machine, start from scratch, and you'll see how quick it is to set this jig up. All right, so I've turned everything else off. The only thing that really matters is just our uh, two positions, position top left, position bottom right, and our dog tag areas. And so what I'm going to do, I need to position this jig. And um, so what we'll do is we'll come up here to the, to the move tab, come up here, and from the machine's home position, I'm going to say go to top left. And the machine is currently moving over to this position right here. Once it gets right here, I'm going to go ahead and lock in the user origin on the control panel. It's there. I'm going to go ahead and say origin. And now we'll place the, uh, the jig in the bed of the laser. Okay, so I've taken this jig out of the machine, I've cleared the laser bed, I've sanded the top of this jig, uh, and now what we're going to do is I'm going to go over to light burn and <clears throat> I am going to uh, select this top left position that's saved. And when I do that, I'm going to place this jig underneath that point 
I'm also going to set that as a user origin. So from now on, we're going to be using user origin instead of absolute coordinates. Um, and the reason why I do that is that way the laser goes from here, does its work, and comes back to here. Instead of coming all the way from the home position to here, does this work, and all the way back. It saves time. Okay, so I've selected the top left uh, coordinates on the, uh, in Lightburn. The head is coming over here and this is where it sits. I place uh, the top left hole underneath the uh, red dot pointer. And you can tell when you're in the hole, the red dot pointer almost disappears. You can't hardly even see it. And if you're off just a little bit, you can really see how it shows up. I don't know if it'll show up that well on, uh, on the video camera or not, but when you get it right, um, it, it just flat disappears, just like that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select bottom right, and I'm going to just bounce back and forth here until both of those are good to go, and I know that my jig's lined up. Now normally I would probably, uh, uh, I'll probably place my tags in here before I get too carried away, and that way I don't have to touch anything. trickiest part of this whole process is um, this right here. You notice that I wasn't very square. So now I'll start there, go back to the top left. And this might take you all oh, three or four tries to get it down, but it's, it's pretty quick. Boom, there we go. Now she's all set up. That probably took me 15, 20 seconds, and if I, if I wasn't videoing it, it'd be even faster. Now if I want to double check to make sure that I'm good to go, I can uh, frame the dog tag that I'm gonna print out just to be sure. Well, as you can see, making one of these jigs is pretty straightforward. Just take your time. Once you have it set up right, you'll be amazed on how fast you can get set up and going on engraving any tags that you might like. I hope this was helpful, and as always, like and subscribe. Have a great day.